Then <laughs> That <laughs> Juju, amale woni te na juwa dukki juju te on tarun te on mari khwa mazat ngata ra ngan la kazuk yo te na obora jat te na te obor na ma ngata phia man ma phan po jik nang azuk sima me te gayar dang diri te stros ma lut nang te chang ma kol ches ke ngata ra jing chang ma shik che shik ton to po ma nyu a cha che shik man chang phan to che shik miruk ze te mon te noyale te na i kan ni dak sang dak sang amale chi chi no tskal yo tiak zer kan gun ngai i ka chun di chos te Nije in pat sama la sil nian chesi hala le ika chos tiot le oi bo nije kamiti hal jik tsok shia yale jarte bora zade yale chichi kampe na bora mazat kamiti hal jik ash nije sikula shikot kane chugun sil nian chano yang kane kane shikot kane miun sil te hago shik nian ches no yale te oi bo nije kamiti hal jik a jarte bora zade yale iu nije la ba pun te ni mang pik ni miju te yang atang tore yaka yang padumi ka yang jarte seno te ni nije yang isam shiki zuk tos pins te nije la chakla jod do te zuk sama tos sama pins te ngai yaka actually started in, in 1991 with the help of ISEC director Helena Nobok uh, she she have seen the lots of skills in women 
and uh, and with some group of uh, local women she started to set up women's alliance it was uh, started in 1991 uh, the main um, aims of uh, women's alliance is to preserve the culture and agriculture works of Latari. And um, for that, Women's Alliance doing a different activities like village meeting, hand, different handicraft works like knitting, weaving, tailoring, um, and many of the other things. You know. And in the, during the village meeting, women from uh, the Le Valley, uh, we have a six, 65 women that women used to go to the different very remote far flung area of Ladakh in order to educate, in order to e encourage the other farming women, in order to tell them that how it is important to preserve our own culture and agriculture works. <laughs> I'm the director of ISEC, International Society for Equality and Culture, and I have been working in Ladakh for 33 years now. This is my 33rd year. And from the experience of seeing Ladakh or Little Tibet, an ancient remote culture on the Tibetan plateau, changed because of the modern economy. Uh, I witnessed this change over many, many years, speaking the language fluently, and that gave me an insight into why culture and agriculture all around the world is changing and homogenizing into a, a global monoculture. The government was subsidizing food produced in huge monocultures, in Punjab for instance, and they were bringing that into Ladakh, and basically because of subsidized transport, subsidized roads, petroleum, the food in the local market was cheaper than food that had been produced one mile away. So even though it had been dragged over the Himalayas with all that pollution and all that effort, it sold at such a low price that it was destroying the market for local farmers. So basically what I witnessed in Ladakh is how 
in order to understand why culture and agriculture around the world is breaking down and people are rejecting the diversity of farming systems and languages and identities, we have to understand the two levels. There's psychological pressure and the economic pressure. And we have to look at hidden subsidies, not direct subsidies only to farmers, but also to petroleum, to building up an urban infrastructure and creating more and more dependence, every day more dependence on longer and longer distance trade. We have a local restaurant here. We have just uh, started a restaurant in order to get direct income for the women and also to um, advertise local foods, you know, and also to get to get to know the tourists that uh, what's the real, real traditional uh, food of the um, of the Lidah. The Dahi people have a feeling, you know, I told you that, and they, they feel that their own traditional food is not so much good. They don't, the tourists will not prefer for the, the Dahi local food, you know, and tourists also don't ask, uh, you know, about the local food. Traditionally, Ladakhis, Ladakhi food, we are totally organic. They don't use parasite. They don't know about the parasite and pesticides. Now, Women's Alliance give a lot of information. And uh, now, in many of the villages, they have minimized and um, they are now replaced in organic farms. But still, we have to do a lot of hard work in these fields, you know. After we get trained by running this uh, restaurant, maybe we will get more income from them. We hope to get more income from the restaurant. In Ladakh, when I first came here in 1975, people were still living in a way that was adapted to this ecosystem. They were also producing primarily for themselves. They hadn't been colonized, so they hadn't been forced onto huge monocultures to, to produce cotton or, or wheat or sugar for Europe. They had instead evolved practices that enabled them to provide for themselves from this land. 
and is a very difficult environment, one of the most difficult inhabited environments in the world. Uh, but because there was this deep, intimate knowledge of this specific climate and the soils and the species of plants and animals, there was this deep connection between the cultural diversity and the biological diversity. Time in these cultures has never been a commodity. They've never had to pay for time. So the, they believe uh, also that everything we've done has been successful. And at the same time that there was an organic movement growing in the West, the Indian government here was promoting DDT and other pesticides that had been outlawed in the West. So it's very, very important that there be a deeper information sharing. And so when the Ladakh is here, that actually we don't live like gods, that we have problems, and they learn that there are a lot of initiatives in the West to try to support healthier, more sustainable ways of doing things. Uh, that's very persuasive. And it's not about telling the Ladakhis what to do, it's about them having better information, fuller information about what's going on in the rest of the world. This is three, one for Buddha, one for Sangha, one for Dharma. And also these are, yeah, one you offer, at least you must two offer three. Three number, one for Buddha, one for Dharma, one for Sangha. This is my view, Luca. Mm -hmm. Please, this is my suggestion or view for the young Ladakhi people. Okay. For the teenage, the young Ladakhi people, they, when they see tourists, they are thinking very rich. Oh, they are coming from paradise. Oh, big rock set, yes, uh, yeah, with the camera or many, many things. But my understanding is the life standard is quite different quite different, but Ladakh is the richest country in the world, okay. if you agree or not, because 100% people has a house in Ladakh, 100% people has a field to eat, and 100% people has animals, we have animals, and uh, we know how to make our clothing huh, from the uh, animals. Our farmer or grandfather, fathers are so intelligent, they build house in Ladakh most of the time very close and the slope of the mountain so that you can save the field for the food. Now this is shame, you see, when I was younger, I, when I used to go to Leh and from the main market, if you walk two minutes, everywhere there was the field. Now this is shame. You see now everywhere on the field in Leh they built houses, okay. guest house, house, yeah. yeah, and okay. In future, if they have tourists, okay, no problem. If they have no tourists. <laughs> People come here because they're interested in Ladakh, its future, its people, its agriculture. And so if people can try to communicate more to the Ladakhis, the desire in the West for organic food, for fresh food, the health reasons, the environmental reasons, uh, this can have a huge impact in Ladakh. And the more that they ask 
for fresh local organic food, the more they can help production here survive. I heard from the venue, many of the restaurant runners in the villages, you know, uh, tourists, many of the tourists that don't like local food, you know, they're asking for Maggi, packaging foods, that's why they're serving um, in the restaurant, they're serving Maggi as well, you know, but we are forbidding them to use that kind of things. But it is the role of tourists to, you know, support local people. I am the youngest child in the family, you know. My mother do a lot of love for me. So uh, whenever she have a packaging food like Maggi, uh, the chocolates, uh, she used to gift for me, you know. Uh, she used to cook, uh, you know, like uh, rice. They're, she's keeping rice for me. And my mother become part of Women's Alliance. After that, she get a lot of knowledge from the Women's Alliance. And now she, she can understand that packaging food is not good for health. That's why she used to, you know, uh, feed me more cola, papa, local foods. And also, she's very efforts to do uh, work in the fields, like this kind of things. Yeah. I am a teacher, but sorry, I'm not an English teacher. In, in, in Ladakh, uh, we have 120 villages, and I've been uh, 92 villages. So I know very well about Ladakh. Yeah. And I was uh, with the nomad people as a teacher seven years. And I was not teacher for the children. I was also teacher with the people. I was educated there, everything. Yeah about hygiene, about this, uh, uh, about education, yes. Uh, and I, I am also very proud being a teacher. Uh, our Lord Buddha says, if you can help to others, very good. If not, not to harm. I cannot help with the money. I cannot help with the food. I can help if I have a little bit knowledge, I can share with the people. And this is great I, uh, peace in my inside huh? and happy. In Ladakh also, uh, we say teacher is the next to God. And uh, we say God bring us on the earth, teacher take us in the sky. Even education, the children sent to the monastery and in the Gompa, you can have education and food, both in farmer time. Now you see, we have schools. For the school, you need pen, pencil, yeah, notebook, uniforms. We need money. Ladakh, the, the combination of education and subsidies means that young people are leaving the land and that it's a very worrying situation because that led the young to think that this modern culture that not only had a lot of money but also these amazing technologies seemed superior to what their parents were offering them. The parents seemed to be offering them just this hard life of working on the land, using their hands, and it seemed very backward and primitive compared to this modern culture. And the local 
semi-autonomous government is promoting organic agriculture and local food now. But at the moment, the trends are still, the macro trend is still in the opposite direction. Three more. Three. Yeah. This cup. Oh. Now minty. More cups. No more cups. Two cups of this minty. Mm -hmm. Feed to cattle. That's for the... is that people here were not dependent for their daily needs on a system and farmers on the other side of the world. They were dependent primarily on themselves, not as individuals, but as communities. I believe that the message is very, very positive because we are saying that the changes we must make to survive, to support diversity, to reduce global warming, to reduce our dependence on petroleum. These changes are the changes we need to make to be happy.